Hi, I'm Phil Constantine. On today's episode of Travels with Phil, we are going to Ohio and to look into the Battle of Fallen Timbers, which took place in August of 1794. Yes, indeed, this was in the Northwest Territory in the United States. And no, it's not in Pacific Northwest. You can see it on the map here. It's just to the east of the Mississippi, the area that's not in the blurry situation there. And this is just after the American Revolution that this area was set up by the Northwest Ordinance. And these are the Indian tribes that lived out there in the states where they were at. George Washington, well, they were trying to expand past the Ohio River. And so he sent out the U.S. Army under... Josiah Harmar and the Indian tribes out there, the Confederation, the Western Confederation, under Little Turtle and lots of different tribes, defeated him. Well, Washington then sent out Arthur St. Clair and they defeated them again. And then finally, George sent out Mad Anthony Wayne. Well, this is the area that he came into. This is the Northwest Territory and he came up out of the area around Cincinnati. And as he went along, he did it differently than the previous armies. So let's take a look at the area. This is Cincinnati, where he started his trip in, and it took him over a year to get there. He built uh, little forts, stockades, as he went along to protect his supply lines. He stopped in Fort Recovery, built a spot there, and that's where St. Clair was defeated. And that was the biggest defeat in U.S. military history uh, by percentages. And then eventually came up toward uh, Fort Defiance. He set that up, and that was a large group of villages up there. So he set up a fort there and got almost to Toledo, or modern-day Toledo. Toledo was not there at the time, and this is where the Fallen Timbers battlefield is located. And you can see here that it's uh, the battlefields to your left. Fort Miami is another important spot there and then uh, as you come into the park itself it's in several sections now this is the main visitor center lots of signs out there so you'll be able to find out what's going on if you're not familiar with this battle and a lot of people aren't so even though this is one of the most important ones in early american history and these are the confederate uh, the american indian tribe allies there these are some of the leaders little turtle blue jacket are some of the better known ones these are some of the leading U.S. figures, including a former, a future president. Travels with Phil continues here in uh, not too far from Toledo, Ohio, at what's called the uh, Fallen Timbers Battleground. And you can see definitely some, still some Fallen Timbers left out there. Uh, this was an area where uh, American forces under General Mad Anthony Wayne uh, met up with a bunch of uh, American Indians here. They were called the Western Confederacy. Uh, could be Wyandots, Delaware, Ottawa, Miami, Shawnee, and Mingo. And uh, this is a battleground here that after the Revolutionary War, well, French, Americans, British all got together and decided who got what. And so, you know, the Americans got certain things, British got certain things, French got other things, etc., 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 except the only people that weren't included were the American Indians or Native Americans, if you prefer. And it was this battle here where... The American Indians finally got together and decided, well, we're not going to put up with this anymore. Now, this was called the Northwest Territory, so they started fighting back. Now, they defeated Harmar, they defeated St. Clair, and this uh, general part of the country. What's always struck me as a little bit unusual is that this is what's called the Northwestern Territory. And, uh, yeah, well, back in those days, for as far as the United States was concerned, yeah, this was the Northwest, even though it's on the eastern side of the Mississippi River. But uh, this is one of the biggest battles that happened in the post-revolutionary war and one of the biggest battles ever as far as uh, American Indians and uh, American Army forces were concerned. So from Fallen Timbers Battlefield, just out of Toledo, Ohio, Travels with Phil continues. Travels with Phil continues at the uh, Battle of Fallen Timbers. There you go. You can see it on the picture there. And this is the area out there where most of it happened, a little bit out here. Uh, why was it called Fallen Timbers? Well, there had been a tornado through the area recently, and lots and lots of wood, woods were downed. Uh, the Indians numbered about uh, about 1,000. The Americans numbered about 2,000. You can see by one of the signs here who were some of the people involved. Well, there you go. William Henry Harrison eventually became president. Hey, these guys look familiar. They look like Lewis and Clark. Well, that's because they are Lewis and Clark. They were here. Some of the American Indians that were uh, leaders that were here were uh, a Blue Jacket of the Shawnee, a Little Turtle of the Miami, and Buck and Gahalis of the uh, Delaware were here. Uh, what happened because of this battle? Uh, eventually, I mean, for all practical purposes, the Indians lost. Uh, they wound up 
giving away a lot of land. This is what was left of Ohio. This is the Ohio now. And basically, they gave up all of the area down here toward the bottom half of the map, down in this area here. They kept some of this except for a big square that you see up there and a few other little spots. But uh, that's because basically they uh, got sort of cornered, for lack of a better term. And this was called the Treaty of Greenville. And uh, this is how the um, United States wound up acquiring a good chunk of Ohio from the Battle of Fallen Timbers. Travels with Phil continues. So let's go over to the monument area across the freeway. Travels with Phil continues at the Falling Timbers Memorial site. What do you think about history? Uh, this is a very nice monument right here. And it's uh, the Greenville Treaty, the Falling Tim or the Fall In or Fallen Timbers. And uh, the only problem is, is this is where they originally thought the battle took place, but it didn't. <laughs> it took place on the other side of the freeway over there. Now, there, granted, there's something may have happened over here, but they thought that this was the main site of the battle. As it turns out, it wasn't. Uh, 1995, uh, there had been some nagging suspicions for a long, long time that this was not the scene of the battle. And by the way, they do have a, a notice here, or what, at least a memorial, I guess, to Chief Little Turtle and the rest of the Indians right there. But uh, turns out this was not the main battle site. Uh, they started taking uh, special uh, remote sensing devices, uh, metal detectors, all kinds of other stuff, and found out that the real battle site was the other side of the freeway over there that I showed you in the other video. And then they came through and they started finding buttons and bullets and all kinds of stuff that showed that that's where it really happened. They're not that far away, but it's just always interesting how that happens. Right here, in memory of all the American Indians who gave their lives at this place, including members of the Chippewa, Delaware, Miami, Mingo, Ottawa, Potawatomi, Shawnee, and Wyandotte. Dedicated in 94. It was in 95 through 2000 that they actually determined that it probably happened on the other side. Now, however, this is called Turkey Foot Rock. And it says here, Turkey Foot Rock. On this rock, according to tradition, Chief Turkey Foot of the Ottawa Indians rallied his warriors during the Battle of Fallen Timbers. Here he was killed, and for many years, tribesmen made offerings of tobacco on this rock to appease the Great Spirit. Which is sort of funny, you go to a lot of spots out west uh, where battles took place, and you'll see cigarettes. And some people will think that you're, they are littering. But no, that's an offering of tobacco. So, while there may have part of the fighting, since, you know, you had 3,000 people fighting, and this isn't that far away, some of the fighting may have actually taken place here. This was not the major part of the major scene of the battle. But still interesting stuff. The travels with Phil continues. Now, a lot of the numbers you see are estimates, so there's variations. But uh, the U.S. Army basically won this, and one of the reasons why is because uh, several uh, tribal leaders uh, were either killed or taken out of uh, play, and so this caused confusion. And then the tribes uh, decided, well, we'll go back over to and see if the British will help us out over at Fort Miami's, which is uh, just a couple of miles away. Well, the British had just... You know, they were fighting the French. They had signed a treaty with America, so they didn't want to get involved. So they did not open up their fort to allow the American Indian tribes that were fighting the American army to come in. Now, this is the scene of that uh, fort. So this is what led to a lot of disillusionment among the uh, tribes that were willing to fight the American army. And so they just went basically home and gave up and eventually went to the uh, Greenville Treaty and... Finally, it was one of the first times ever America had signed a treaty and negotiated a treaty among the people who actually lived in the area where the treaty took place. So this was the Battle of Fallen Timber in Ohio. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please feel free to make comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And if you like this video, please click on the thumbs up button below. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the circle with my picture in it in the lower right-hand corner of the video. The arrow is pointing at it now. And once you have subscribed, you can be notified of when I have a new video posted by clicking on the bell icon in the description field below the video. Thanks again for watching.